So I'll be honest, I haven't really been excited about technology products in a while, mainly because I don't think they've done anything exciting in the past few years. Sure, phones are being rehashed with AI, speakers still put out really good sound, most computers all perform the same, and in this case, so do most cameras. This isn't necessarily a bad thing because I think it just means technology's in a pretty good state and it's very affordable for diehards like myself and casual people who aren't really looking for the craziest and latest pieces of technology. The DJI Pocket 3, however, is one of the most interesting products in recent years because it's portable, it's easy to use, and it has a lot of features built into it that I think are very convenient. And by the way, I thought I'd mention this even though it's kind of obvious, but I am not sponsored in any shape, way, or form by DJI. Every product that I've reviewed up to this date is bought with my own hard-earned money. If the experience is my own, they have no say in this. I figured I'd throw that little disclaimer out there because I know everybody is up in arms about sponsored reviews. So yeah, just throwing it out there. This is not sponsored. DJI is not paying me anything. So without much further ado, let's get back to the regular programming. I originally made a video with my first impressions on it, but after a little over six months of owning it, the DJI Pocket 3 has really grown on me. So I wanna just talk about the main reasons why I bought the Pocket, which is for the follow focus. I believe it's using the same features from their drone lineup, which explains why it does a really good job at following the subjects and whatever it is you're trying to track. All you have to do is double tap what you want the camera to track on your screen, and it tracks them for as long as they are on screen and they just don't go too far off screen. Plus, it's also very easy for anyone to use. You just push the power button on it to turn it on, leave it be if you want to shoot video in portrait mode for social media, or flip the screen if you want to shoot horizontal, aka widescreen, the way most videos and movies are watched. To add to its ease of use, the menus are very easy to navigate, and the DJI Mimo app is also very good as well if you want to connect to the Pocket remotely. It's not a perfect app, but it's better than anything Sony has made, and this is coming from a Sony shooter. There are also multiple shooting modes like panorama, time-lapse, slow mode, if you really want to get experimental and get really creative with your shots. Personally, I don't use a lot of those modes very often, but I do love the spin shot because it gives me a cool 180 degree camera spin without having to mount my camera onto a big gimbal to get those crazy music video shots. Like I mentioned, it's very compact, which makes it easy to pack whether you're putting it in your pocket, hence why it's called a DJI pocket, in your purse, your backpack, it basically fits anywhere and you don't even notice it. It also has a built-in mic, which sounds all right, but if you have a wireless DJI Mic 2, they've made it very easy to pair up simply by powering on your camera, powering on your mic, it auto connects, and bam, you have nice, clean audio. I think these features have made the DJI Pocket a hot commodity and it seems to be continually on back order for many retailers. However, this doesn't mean it doesn't come with any flaws. My major issue with the DJI Pocket 3 is really Really the build quality. I understand that they may have had to cut some corners to get the price down and affordable for general consumers such as myself, but this camera just feels a bit flimsy. Most of it is all plastic, it feels very cheap, and it wobbles quite a bit if you connect the extended battery to it. Basically, I'm afraid to drop it because I feel like it's just gonna shatter. The camera lens itself also is very questionable as it tends to rotate quite a bit, often being exposed even with the protective case on. If you're packing it on the go, I would recommend padding it up or putting it in between items where it won't move around a lot at the risk of scratching up your lens. Now, this isn't a major concern, and I know I praise the follow focus, Focus, but if you're using it to track animals, the pocket seems to struggle quite a bit in this aspect. I tried using it to follow my cat around just for experimental footage and followed him around the house on his daily endeavors and the camera struggled quite a bit when I was tracking him. I do plan on testing it in more action style shots, but I do understand that this is not a action camera, so it's not really made for that purpose. If you're trying to use it for animals and action shots, your results might vary. Overall though, I think the Pocket is one of the funnest pieces of tech to use in a long, long time. It's very easy to operate, it's affordable, it's convenient, and best of all, it's packed with a lot of features that I think are great for both casuals and professional shooters. Personally, I've used it for family events, and for the professional side of things, I use it as a BTS camera whenever I don't have someone capturing footage for me. If DJI were to release an upgrade to the Pocket 4, if they drop a Pocket 4, I hope they'd improve the build quality to address the issues I mentioned prior because the camera does feel a little flimsy and I don't think it could withstand any heavy use. If you're looking for a vlogging camera, a first-time camera, or 
something that's just easy to operate, I think the Pocket 3 is a great purchase and it's well worth every dime so far. Again, I've used it for personal projects, professional work, and it's just been a doozy. <laughs> so with that being said, I hope you all found this video helpful. If you did, please feel free to like the video down below as it'll help me get some engagement on it. And if you already own the DJI Pocket 3, let me know what your experience has been like in the comments section down below. If you're planning on purchasing it, let me know why. And let me know what your use case has been like as well. And if I missed anything, definitely drop it down in the comments below as well as I am always looking to learn and continually educate myself. And if you found this video helpful, feel free to check out my other videos as I think it'll be very beneficial to you and your educational journey. Again, thank you so much for watching this video all the way through. Your support is extremely, extremely appreciated. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And until next time, I'm out. Peace.